Hey kids, today's episode of the motor heat test is going to be a special one because I am testing GTSs. I've got two of them, so let's get right to it. All right, next board. This is Aaron's GTS. Thank you for trusting me with it. Let's see how it does. Before gradient tracking was introduced, this hill was too steep for a GT, um, possibly also for a GTS. I never tried it, but uh, gradient tracking definitely made it safer to ride down this. Now the tail lifts and you basically, if you want to, you can even come to a stop. Okay. But that is pretty good, so makes me feel a lot safer. Of course, the racer guys, they probably would have been able to go down here, but for an average rider, this was not really a hill that was doable, but gradient tracking definitely opened up this kind of terrain. So we're almost at the bottom, ready to turn around. And I discovered that this little hidden blue line that you see at the bottom, that's actually the diagnostics button. So I can actually press it anytime I want, I figured out. All right, controller is already at 140, just going down this hill. So what I did the past few rides is I actually waited and I allowed the controller to cool down. If we check again. See, 115, and the uh, motor on the other hand was still climbing, which is also expected. Motor temperatures are always delayed when measured. So, let's see one more time, like 110, yeah, one was it perfect. Okay, so now I will start. And back here, all right, ready, and go. All right. I do love how the GTSs now allow you to start on a hill. Like that, with a GT or an XR, you just you always have to find a flat spot and then you ease your way into the hill because they severely limited the, um, the amps that were available at low speed or something, I don't know, but it was basically a known issue. People were always carrying their boards to the next flat spot and then starting. Whereas with the GTS, I can now start pretty much anywhere where I could start with a VESC too. So this is a critical section. I have to clear without, without skidding out. Yep, did it. It got a little bit easier because I've done this hill now so many times. So as you can see, the diagnostics button has disappeared, but actually that little blue line that you can see if I hit it correctly, without, there we go. All right, 176 controller temperature, holy moly. So I didn't want the same thing to happen again um, that happened to me the first time I got the controller to 197. And I really don't want to find out what happens when it goes to thermal cutoff. And honestly, I was shocked when I, I asked on Facebook and I was told that it cuts off at 200 or it alerts at 200. I don't know when exactly it cuts off because unless it just shuts down at 200, it means that it will actually allow you to make it even hotter before it does shut down. So let's see here where we are. 149, see the flat section right here. So I cleared that zone and now let's just keep going. but I will keep an eye on the temperatures and I might take a quick chill break if I see them get close to 190 because I don't want to hit or exceed 200 if I can avoid it. And you can expect that this is going up like 
one degree every second almost. Come on, give me the numbers, 170. Yeah, it's getting a little steeper now. So it's probably climbing as I'm speaking. Come on, hard to hit that little line. Oh, 172, not bad. Almost there, maybe I can make it. 179, all right, I'm gonna finish it. I can make it. There's a little bit of a breeze, so that help, that probably helps. All right, what was the temps? Hey, I didn't go past, I mean, I probably was in the 180s because I couldn't hit that button fast enough, but yeah, motor temp, 134. So the GTS motor is every bit as good as advertised. It didn't get hot. Well, okay, now the temperature is still rising, probably 138. Okay, 138. I assume we're done climbing. Oh no, there's 140. We got 140, we got 140. Anybody offering more? 140. 140 it is. All right. Sold for 140. Yeah, that's actually pretty good result. This is honestly the first time I made it up um, without a break. And there was a good breeze that hit me at the last part of that climb. The first previous attempt uh, that I did, it, um, it, over, it exceeded 180 further down and and one attempt that I did I hit it I got 197 and once I saw the 197 it really scared me and I didn't want to break the controller of Aaron's board I would like to return it unharmed so hopefully it'll stay that way but uh, yeah that was pretty good let's try the next board all right, here's our next board. Beautiful N48 MTE hub. Otherwise, everything is stock. This one does not have any uh, cold blocks or ice blocks or whatever they're called. So let's see if the MTE hub provides an advantage or a disadvantage. The uh, five inch hub really is super pleasant to ride, especially going down this slightly bumpy downhill. It uh, feels so much nicer. And also I should mention that I'm running all of the boards that I'm running here. They're, I'm trying to keep the pressure just under 10 PSI. Uh, I like it softer also, that makes it easier to get over some of the chunk. So um, yeah, I am very, very well aware that a low pressure tire will create or will add to the motor heat up, but there's no way you can ride up this without skidding out if you have a 16 or 18 PSI tire. And uh, especially the MTE hubs, they're meant to be run at low pressure. So, should be good. But, by the way, the gradient tracking settings here, they are um, followed Neil's recommendation and um, I'll post them in the, uh, actually, can I just show them here? Nope, I'm riding. So yeah, I'll post them. Whoa, all right. Made it down. Okay. Here we are. Temperature. Now look at that. The controller is only 127, whereas the motor seems to be about the same. I should mention that Heather's controller is a brand new controller, I think, because she had to send it in. The GTS just died on her. She sent it in, they fixed it. I assume it's a new, I think they told her it's a new controller. And also it did report zero miles when I first connected to it. So most likely 
new controller. All right, starting temperature for the motor is also 104, so time to go. The controller is under 110, which means... Whoa! Okay. All right, so we are off. Now, the speed that I'm going up, up this, um, I should mention that the slower you ride up a steep hill, the quicker your motor will heat up. If I ride up this whole thing at like 8 to 10 miles an hour, which is sort of the fastest I think I can make it up with the chunk and everything, the motor doesn't heat up quite as much. But going up slowly is actually, to me at least, a very representative test case because when I'm going up many tricky single tracks, this is the maximum speed that I can just do based on my riding capabilities. So um, riding up slowly is not some obscure use case because, yeah, I know I can go up 8 to 10 on this one here and do this whole thing in half the time. But to keep it equal, that's why I'm trying to maintain roughly the same speed on all the boards just so that um, just so that it stays fair. And uh, if you noticed, I actually was slower on the X12 board when I rode up. It took me three minutes and 15 seconds. So that technically worked against that setup. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty much impossible to get the exact same time each time. So I just take note of the time. I actually look at the video afterwards and just note the starting timestamp and the end timestamp. And that's how I get the time that I used to, uh, that I needed to get up the hill. So um, if we look at the controller here, controller temps, yeah, 149. So it's a little warm. We'll see. So I got to keep it at around five miles an hour. That's my target speed. But I will take a look at the controller temp every now and then. We're already at 165. It's also a little tricky to do all this without skidding out because I kind of have to keep one eye on the terrain here. Oops. <laughs> and I went off course. Come on. It's so hard to hit that blue line. I don't know why they, there we go, 167, all right, all right. It's probably climbing right now because this here is a steep section. 172, 174, and come on, 178. All right, so this controller made it up without exceeding 180, and I'm already stopped, which means that it's already cooling down, whereas the motor is still heating up. And look at this. The MTE hub actually climbed this thing without heating up as much as the stock GTS hub. Yay! Which is really good, especially considering it has the N48 magnets and not the curved N52s. So, yeah, 136. So there's still, there is a four degree difference. And uh, that basically indicates that by no means is the MTE hub worse in terms of thermals. If anything, so far, and I can tell you that, I'm not going to show you the, the data, but the first few test runs that I did, every single time, the MTE hub was a few degrees cooler than the GTS hub. So it is definitely result, a result that is not just a one-off, but something that I can consistently repeat. All right, so that was the GTS motors. Jeez. Turning behavior still gets me. So, um, yeah. Those were some pretty good results. The controller still is the key problem on the, on the GTS. 
for these uh, slow, long climbs. But the, the motor is clearly performing really well. I mean, super impressive. As far as I'm concerned, if you have a GT and you have overheating issues, the GTS motor, especially if you get the new um, six inch version, is definitely a super nice option to solve that problem once and for all. Uh, your controller might then get warmer, but I don't know, a GT controller doesn't put out as many amps. So maybe overheating on the GT controller is not even an issue. Um, I don't know. But uh, GTS motor as a replacement motor seems like a very attractive proposition. I mean, the price isn't exactly cheap. Um, $850, that's pretty stiff. But um, it is what it is, at least it plugs in easily. It's just literally plug and play, so anyone can do it. And uh, if you have overheating issues, that's probably the way to go. And then there is the MTE hub, which even for a GTS motor is a great upgrade. But that controller heat is no joke. I hope I do hear back from Future Motion on what the exact behavior is supposed to be and how you're supposed to prevent overheating issues. But for now, I would just be really careful. Do monitor your controller heat if you're going up long steep hills or if you're doing a lot of uphill riding to get back to the top to do your downhill. So that was it. See you guys next time.